What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Looking very dapper and professional today. And what we're gonna be going through is five websites that are all making over $40,000 per month. Now given some of these websites have not reported their income since as far back as 2016, but what I hope by this is that you are inspired to see the potentials of where a niche website can really take you and the type of earnings that you can really generate from these types of businesses. So I'm not gonna hold you any longer as there's a ton for us to cover. We're gonna get straight into these websites and I'm gonna show you the earnings, how they're monetizing each of these sites, each of their missions and about the authors and how they started and just a general overlook at each of them. Without further ado, I give you five websites earning over $40,000 per month. So the first one that we're gonna take a look at is called Just A Girl and Her Blog. This was created by Lady named Abby Lawson and then later I believe she brought a husband involved who is a guy named Donnie. All right, so this is just a planning and organization blog that she started back in 2013. So it's quite some time ago. Since then, it's grown to achieve over 300,000 visitors per month. I do believe she was reporting back in 2013 around that kind of view count. It then took a dive, came back up to that point and then a dive again. So, but if we do take a look at her income reports, we can see that she's monetizing it predominantly with affiliate, but then also with digital digital products and ads as well. But if we take a look at the actual numbers that's coming in from each of these traffic sources, we can see that product income, so this is all of her digital products and so on. We've got Paperless Home eBook bringing 774, and this is all the way back in 2016, which is quite interesting, because obviously if she's making that much back then, then God knows where it is now. We've got Building a Framework eBook and Course, so over $5,000 in a single month for that. Then she's also teaching people how to build a blog. And because her target audience is probably predominantly women the way this kind of blog is set up. She's also teaching a lot of people how to build their own incomes. So there might be a lot of mums, single mums or older women that are trying to generate some kind of income online as well. So what you've got here is that she's also making quite a bit, uh, $27,000 actually, more than quite a bit from affiliate programs that are software related. So we've got Bluehost where she teaches you how to start a blog and then obviously as a byproduct of that, you're gonna need hosting. So when she's recommending hosting, she's probably gonna say, this is the one that I use. And if you know she's successful with this blog using that hosting, then you're probably likely to use the same hosting and her link for the value that she's delivered. ConvertKit, which is an email marketing tool, that's also there. PicMonkey and a few other things like Instapage, which would have been relevant back then. Instapage was like a thing, um, can't exactly remember what that was, like a landing page builder or something like that. And then you can see expenses. So these are all the different expenses. Total income was $41,000 and then total expenses was $6,000. So this is just showing you her income over that period of time and how it grew and snowballed and then how the traffic also uh, grew over that period of time. So as you can see, my data wasn't actually correct because if you look at her data, she's got averaging 500 half a million visitors per month at that stage. And then email subscribers, you can see that she's got 100,000 email subscribers, which is ridiculous because email marketing is so beneficial as you can just click a button anywhere from where you are in the world, even on the beach somewhere, and you reach all these people straight away. Um, and if you're selling something that's gonna help people, then you're gonna make quite a bit of money at any point in time. And you can set emails up to automatically go out over the next like six months or over the next three months. So you could take a big trip and be making money consistently uh, through promoting products in your email funnels. So really, really interesting. Um, I'll leave a link to all of these websites that you can check out below the video. I must drop the computer. <laughs> check out any of these websites just below uh, the video. I'll leave a link to all of them, specifically to the income report so you can check that out. So this is the next one, which is called Show Me The Yummy. So this is quite an interesting one. It's ran by, again, another couple, I believe Trevor and Jennifer. They started this blog all the way back in 2014. So it's quite old. We're talking seven years, almost six, six,
six, seven years. It's averaging about 800,000 visitors according to what I'm looking at. So it's averaging around 600,000 visitors according to this tool, SimilarWeb. As you can see lately, I've been putting on a few pounds. So I love my food as you can tell. And I love this website. <laughs> I was actually looking at a few of the recipes, which was pretty cool, but they've got a lot of healthy foods here. Some are unhealthy as you can see, like these lunch things and cookies. Not sure how unhealthy they are because obviously, you know, they'll still be trying to capitalize on everyone's uh, health awareness now because um, everyone's trying to be fit and healthy. But this is predominantly monetized with affiliate. They do have their own digital products and um, they're trying to promote a course here. So I was taking a look at their workshops and if you click through that, it takes you to a workshop where you're gonna probably be upsold on a course if that isn't directly into the course itself. And design wise, you can see that this isn't really anything out of scope. Like this is something that you could easily design and develop. And these things don't really start huge like this, you know? So a lot of the time it's just one or two people, one or two writers. And then over time, as things start to snowball, you will start to expand your team and increase the uh, level of project management that you're carrying out, outsourcing different roles. Just looking at it, it's very good, typical kind of uh, food website, nothing unusual here. They're carrying a lot of recipes and then they've got a schema within the uh, reviews as well. So these reviews here, um, what happens is, is when you search these kind of recipes on Google, like say for example, we was to search this. So as you can see, you're able to see these things here. So what that is, is schema. So that allows bloggers like me and you to display these fancy tables that have reviews on them that are left by our own readers anyway, but it looks more appealing when someone sees it and more professional and trustworthy when it's displayed in this way, you know? So you can start to gain a lot of traffic from ranking with schema without even being in the number one position. So some of these blogs you might find as far back as page two, but they're showing up in here because they've optimized for schema. So the ones who have not generated that within their sites, which it looks like all of them have in this top 10 results here, they would potentially lose that opportunity of showing up in position zero, which is ideally where you want to be as a recipe blog, most importantly. All right, so if we take a look at their income report, we can see that in December 2016, when was the last time they reported their income, they were making $46,000 per month on average with an RPM of $65.78. And what that is, is revenue per milli, per thousand. And then we've also got 704,000 visitors per month on average. So when I was taking a look, it looks like they're still like roughly around that kind of average uh, all these years later. And what I do find is that sometimes, you know, if you're gonna grow a really big website, you're probably gonna hit plateaus and things like that. So depending on if you expand into, you know, a wider kind of industry. So what I would imagine is that they, because they're focused specifically still on recipes and food, they may obviously have hit that cap where they're averaging and just managing that traffic um, at that level. So they've got a DR62 and what that is is the domain rating um, if we take a look at that and they've got quite a lot of uh, referring domains to them. So it's 25,000 in total and I'm sure if we was to take a look at that, they'd have some high authority links coming into their site. Also, let's take a look and see their social media. So these guys have also got a YouTube channel and an Instagram. So they've got 15,000 subscribers on YouTube and let's have a look at how long ago they started this YouTube channel. Channel. So we can see they started the YouTube channel almost five years ago. So they're not actually even showing their face. They're very short videos, three minutes to five minutes, and they're purely focused around teaching you how to create a recipe. So what I'd imagine a lot of the time what it appears to look like is that these guys um, are those that usually find traveling around the world and vlogging and whatever else, and they got like a successful business. Because of that, sometimes you might get them plateauing because they can't absolutely focus all of their time if they're also enjoying traveling at the same time, you know, but it's enough to fund that and also give them a whole heap of savings within the process. So I'm sure they're doing very well and enjoying life. Um, and I'd probably love to be traveling with them if I could. What I'm looking at in regards to the income reports is that a lot of them stop reporting income reports purely because what I find is that it gets to a point where you start to disconnect with your audience. So say for example, I'm still quite small on YouTube. If I start getting millions of views and hundreds of thousands of views, I might not be able to share that income as much with all of you because some of you will respect it, but then others might be a little bit intimidated or a little bit uh, disconnected with that 
level of income and it can start to make you feel like a little bit insecure about yourself. So what I find is that um, a lot of them, they will share their income up until a certain point, but when it starts to blow out of proportion and it's unrealistic in regards to your audience, because you might lose that authenticity and that relatability. I'm not quite sure if that's the reason, but um, that's my kind of two pence on that. All right, so again, I'll leave a link to this awesome uh, blog, nice and simple. As you can see, uh, this is something that you could potentially generate if you're into food, you love food. And it's one of those industries though that is very saturated. So you'd have to be very careful and I would say be very prepared to build links and be super unique. I think those are gonna be your two angles in really shining in an industry like this. Maybe potentially doing like physical events or something like that to build yourself up organically. They're collecting leads here and that doesn't look that appealing, but I'd imagine they got this all over the blog um, because maybe they could make this a bit more enticing, but 100,000 email subscribers um, says that they know what they're doing, okay? Can't really argue with that. This was Survival Life, which is the next one I want to show. And this website is netting over a million dollars per month. Now, what was quite interesting is they're actually only pulling in around 250,000 visitors per month. So it's not as much as some of the larger sites that we've seen traffic wise. Earnings wise, this is the larger site. Now, the reason why is predominantly because of the way that they're monetizing their audience. So they focus specifically when building this site on email marketing and creating their own products. So as you know, with affiliate marketing, we're usually promoting a third party vendor's product and we're only take, uh, taking a commission or a cut of that. So when we're talking about Amazon and things like that, and we're focusing on niche websites in that way, we're usually making only like three to 5%. But with when you're selling your own product, once you've created your sales page and whatever else it may be, you're taking 100% of the profits side of whatever advertising costs you have. What they did is they focused on creating their own products and then setting up an affiliate program for people to promote their products and pay them a commission of that. So they completely turned affiliate marketing on its head and opposed to being the affiliate, they instead went down the route of being the vendor. Okay, so that's quite interesting. I don't see anything in regards to ads on their site. And also one of the other things is I can't really find information about the author. So I did try and Google and uh, do a quick search and see if I could find anything, but I personally couldn't. Maybe with a bit more time, I could. They do have some social media following. So we've got 51,000 followers on Instagram. They got a very low engagement rate though from 51,000 followers. They're only getting like 100 odd clicks on an image, okay? But it's still good. Any traffic is good traffic coming into their site from Instagram. And then we've got also, they've got a YouTube channel. So they're not really getting a lot of views on that. And personally, I believe that's because they haven't been really heavy and focused on um, the quality, what they're pushing up and the consistency, you know, but I don't really think consistency is that important for this type of uh, YouTube channel. I think it's more on the topics that they've actually created content around. If we just take a look, there's a ton of outdoor survival guides, like how to turn a bug bag into a minimalist backpack, five primitive cooking methods, so on and so forth. So there's tons of information. I'd imagine it also ventures into like hunting and things like that as well, a lot of outdoor activity. And it's a really useful site. It does look like an authority site. The whole general look is almost like a news website. So that's the way it does come across. Now there's a report from Ryan Deese from Digital Marketer where he's interviewing or these guys are providing a guest post and he gives a lot of information on the strategies that they use by picking a popular industry to get into, looking at the angles they could come from and how they could monetize it differently, focusing on email marketing as their main part of monetization in the earlier stages. So it's quite interesting because it seems like he's a person who doesn't believe of putting himself out in the public. And then he makes an analogy to Oprah of talking about how she established herself as becoming so successful through hiring a bunch of other experts to work amongst each other and create that authority amongst the team of you opposed to you being the authority yourself. Okay, so it's quite an interesting concept. And there are a few golden nuggets in this. Now, this is a little bit dated. I think it's from all the way back in 2016. But as you know, there's still a lot that you can pull out from these kinds of information. And according to my tool, they're pulling in right around what they reported at 250,000 visitors per month. So a very interesting blog. I would encourage you to go check it out if you are potentially considering getting into this type of industry.
industry, a million dollars per month. Absolutely shocking at the amount that you can make with this type of website in this kind of industry. Now, the next website is called Nerd Fitness, which was created by Steve Cam in 2007. This website's currently pulling in over $100,000 per month in revenue and over 1 million visitors per month in traffic. So Forbes actually reported uh, this website as a success story, which I'll leave a link to below this video. Steve just shares a bit of his information of how he established the blog and founded it, how he built his team and some of the strategies behind his success. So it's quite interesting. The site was put together specifically to help nerds take care of their health and discuss things that nerds love to discuss, such as PC gaming and tech. When we take a look at the site, I personally love it. It almost reminds me of looking at Netflix or a film type of site, like you're expecting like a movie or like there's a team of movie or they're just a really fun team. You can tell they're having fun and they love this uh, this whole business. So it looks really interesting. And when there's passion in it like that, it really reflects on the success. Okay, so we can see that they're monetizing with email marketing as well, 300,000 uh, email subscribers plus there. And they're giving away free eBooks. So you opt in to the irresistible offers. And then on the back end, they'll probably try and upsell you to their one-on-one -on -one coaching or digital products. They sell private coaching, affiliate marketing, and they also run sponsored emails and sponsored posts, okay? So that means other third-party businesses are actually paying them to promote to their audience. So say, for example, someone's got something that's health-related or something to do with the uh, topics that they cover across the website, then that third party might pay them to go and promote that to their audience of over 1 million visitors or email subscribers across their email list. Now, what I did like about this site is the fact that it still kind of has an old school feel to it. Now, this does make sense for the way that they've created this business. So it almost looks like a kind of site that you could promote a ton of ClickBank products on. And it looks like they're using almost like Generate Press or something. Like, And if we were to take a look at their traffic here, let's have a look what this says. And you can see they're, you know, reaching over a million visitors per month, according to similar web. The very last site, uh, that I'm gonna go through is called Dollar Sprout. Many of you may have heard it. It's a site that teaches you how to make money online, save and invest. There's lots of information there and they actually share their income reports. So this was a site created by Ben Hubba or Huba, not too sure, Megan Robinson and Jeff Proctor. The goal of the site behind their mission in their about page is specifically to help you manage your personal finance and learn how to become confident with that. So we can see in the uh, latest income reports, which is, I would say, one of the most recent out of all the sites that we've taken a look at today, $167,000 profit for the given month of February. What's quite nice about Dollar Sprout is they share quite a bit of information on how they built the site up. So they're reporting as far back as 2015, the most recent being here of 2019. And you can generally see a little bit about their backstory of what it took them to get here. If we take a look at the website, I would say it's not so much basic. This site is simple, but not easy because this kind of site uh, takes a lot of thought. There's a lot of conversion rate optimization put into the way that things are positioned, color schemes, and the general overall theme of the way this site is. Okay, so it looks very professional. I've not actually ever looked at Dollar Sprout's YouTube channel. I would have imagined it to be big, but it's 10,000 subs, so not really a big channel. If we take a look at their monthly traffic here, we can see that they're netting about 400,000 visitors per month on average. So it's quite a lot of traffic and they are specifically focused on affiliate marketing. So they're obviously giving away some kind of free eBooks here or free cheat sheet. And then when you get into the email list, uh, they'll monetize on the back end. So if you want to know more about Dollar Sprout, I'd highly encourage you to check that out as well because it's an absolutely brilliant site. Even to just learn ways of saving and making money online, um, it's also good for that. And it's a free resource. There you have it that's five websites all making over forty thousand dollars per month now given some of them are all the way back in 2016 we actually don't even know where they are currently today a lot of these websites as i said i do believe feel that there's a disconnect in relatability which is why they stopped reporting these income reports however if you do take a quick google there's tons of directories that share 
a bunch of income reports from successful sites. Even if they're earning as small as a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars, I'm sure that would change your life if that's coming in every 30 days. And if you do want to learn SEO yourself, then I would also encourage you to go check out my uh, free cheat sheets or any of the courses that I'm recommending below because they are great resources that have helped me to make money online. All right, so thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.